While the Berserker Barbarian is often listed as an S-tier Barbarian build, I personally prefer the more durable and reliable physical Barbarian builds, and the most classic of these is the Whirlwind Barbarian, who wholeheartedly fits in the spin-to-win philosophy. And while he does have his weaknesses, he is by far the more relaxing build to play, with almost no loss in speed when you reach endgame gear, though he can be a little more tough to develop until you reach at least mid-quality items. Now, while its Berserker cousin is great for target farming, the Whirlwind Barbarian is the answer to crowd farming, and with the right gear he can clear areas at a solid speed, while still being able to turn around and hork the world for a second chance it drops. And generally speaking, I find him much more relaxing for rune and charm farming places like Travancle, and far simpler for knocking out most areas that are not packing physical immunes, though even with those we do have an answer that we'll get to at higher levels. This is because our skill section is pretty simple and point friendly, with 20 points in our weapon of choice, which you see as swords here since grief phase blades are generally the top pick for the slot, though when you're talking mid-range equipment, two-handed options with blunt to use IK Maul or Ribcracker are a solid pick, or if you're talking super budget, pole arms are a great choice for a balance of speed, power, and range, not to mention some decent rune words. That said, swords are fine along the entire path if you really need one-handed. Being middle of the road early on, and among the top two picks later on. In this tree, we also pick up our 1-point wonders, Natural Resistance, which boosts our resists a decent amount, and makes even no-shield setups fairly resilient against elements, even with mid-range gear, and we also pick up Increased Speed to increase our movement speed to keep our Whirlwinds at a decent pace. Over in the actual combat skills tree, we have Whirlwind, which should be obvious considering the name of the build, and it is a skill that is often misunderstood. The main function of this skill is to serve as a solid area of effect option to deal with swarms of enemies, though it can be used to focus down solo enemies depending on how you actually choose to spin. For large crowds, you can skim along them with longer whirlwinds to recover the mana cost of using the skill, while against solo targets or small crowds, you'll want to use smaller, tighter formations like the popular triangle for dealing with these smaller targets and packing more hits on them. The other skill, and one we generally get one point in until all of our other skills are done, is Berserk. This is our answer to physical immunes, and you do want at least one point in it by the time you get to hell for just that reason. And you'll find most physical immunes, with the exception of specific frenzy tours in Act 5, pretty easy to take down with it. That said, it is the last skill I invest in after that one point, since other things are more important for me, especially when not using a shield. You'll also use Leap Attack a decent amount if you're going with a non-Enigma version of the build, or when you're doing budget or solo cell found, since it allows for a lot more mobility, especially in Acts 3 and 4 where you can jump over various rivers or through certain grates. Now if we move over to the War Cries, what you get here kind of depends on your goals. If you're doing Magic Find, maxing out Find Potion is usually a good pickup later on, since it has a synergy with Find Item, and if you use it, Grim Ward as well, making them both quite effective. And I personally even use this on some trash mobs whenever I'm looking for item bases in level 85 areas, when I'd go with low Magic Find setups for crowd farming rather than for target farming. That said, you also of course want to pick up Battle Orders for the life and mana boost in general, since it lets the Barbarian have his tankiness. And while it's not necessary to max it, for shield list builds, I usually do, and it's pretty much a given if you're doing hardcore as well. I usually max this after Weapon Mastery and Whirlwind, with one point in Battle Command of course for the bonus plus skills prior to dropping orders, but it is still kind of a really nice thing to have just for regular old durability. That said, all of this should seem fairly familiar to most Barbarian players, as it is pretty much the standard go-to for most Barbarian builds, since they all follow the pattern of primary combat skill, weapon mastery, and choice of war cries, with the one exception being the Cry Barb itself, which skips the combat skill. And the growth pattern is fairly similar among all of them, where in normal your investment is pretty much going to be weapon mastery and one point wonders until you reach the combat skill of choice, just using your one point wonders along the way to kind of beat your way through. In this case, bash into leap attack and concentrate into whirlwind and berserk, with the one point war cries to help you out along the way. Gear-wise, in normal, the usual pickup rune words like Malice or Steel for weapons, Rhyme for a shield, and Stealth for armor are going to be your usual go-tos if you can find stuff for them along the way. Though, there are actually a lot of choices beyond these, which is why I made the rune word set and unique series, so you can browse through and find things that fit your personal playstyle a bit better and may be easier for you to make. That said, there are also a few crafting options, but we usually only see those as we start approaching Nightmare and Hell difficulty, with hit power weapons actually being really solid picks for solo 
helpless self-found characters who just can't seem to find a good weapon or rune word base, since it will often give you a powerful, rare, blunt weapon to hold over until you get to some of the two-handed budget items like Ribcracker that can drop in Nightmare or Immortal Kings that can drop in Hell. Most people will still favor rune words if they want to avoid resetting their skills though, since they're generally the best way to get solid swords, so I'll link a sword specific rune word video right here in the top right. As far as what attributes you want to be looking for, open wounds, ignore target defense, and just more damage are going to be the big ones, as is crushing blow for your budget gear. And there are a decent number of gear options with these, though in some situations you may find your attack rating struggling a little bit if you're not going for the high dex blocking build. So stuff like Angelic's Rings and Amulet are really easy to get options for a pretty significant attack rating bump, as are Charms, which while you prefer plus damage oriented Charms usually, plus attack rating can really smooth things out so hold on to them. As far as the Mercenary, that can also help you out. In budget gear, an Act 1 Mercenary can actually seriously drop enemies defense to let you have a solid hit chance, thanks to her inner sight, and will generally help you even more than a blessed aim or might mercenary until you get up to a reasonable chance to hit without her. Now, you will not need to get chase gear to have that chance, much less GG gear, but you will eventually want to get at least reasonable equipment eventually if you want to fully realize your whirlwind barbarian. And there's pretty much three versions you can go with, the two-handed barbarian, the sword and board, and the dual wielding. For this video, what you see in the background is the dual wielding, the more expensive but faster of the three. The more budget-friendly two-handed whirlwind barbarian though often favors either the IK Maul or Ribcracker mentioned earlier for their crushing blow, good base mods, flexibility, etc. And in the case of Immortal King's weapon, it actually is pretty decent to be paired with the set for just an all-around decent toolset. There are also of course more expensive options in the form of things like Breath of the Dying that can be used in multiple forms with most people preferring Spear, but there are some other fun options like the Archon Staff we covered in a previous video. If you're going for more sword and board for something like Hardcore Mode, the two main shields you want to look at are either going to be Storm Shield, which is the better of the two for survivability purposes, thanks to damage reduction resist and solid block, the other shield being Phoenix, which is more offensive minded, and will do better at keeping you topped off while spinning since it will eat corpses to restore your stats. But in doing so, it does remove one of the Barbarian's biggest advantages, find item. Not to mention it also requires a lot more dexterity for max block than Storm Shield, so it tends to sit in a weird middle ground between Storm Shield and the dual wield option. Now if you're going for absolutely maximum damage, dual wield is the way to go. And for most use cases, you'll use the same weapon for sword and board, and that is grief. Here we're dual wielding griefs in phase blade since we are PVM. You can also do griefs and berserker axes for a bit higher damage, but those will require constant repair, so you generally only see them in PvP. Now the main situation when you'd choose a weapon over this would be for doing targets like Ubers with Last Wish in a sword and board setup, but that's more target specific and does not work well for most of the game compared to Dual Grief. The rest of the gear is pretty straightforward, with armor usually being a choice between Enigma for teleport, in case you're farming bosses, or if you're doing area clear like we have been in the background, I tend to prefer Fortitude for the boosted damage since it works exceptionally well with griefs in this type of build, though admittedly, I farm more for bases, jewels, and runes than I do for uniques these days, so you might prefer the mobility of Enigma and the target farming aspect. And it is worth noting that if you do go with Enigma, you'll want to consider your weapon swap for a bit of faster cast, with a serious budget option being dual spirits or even, in some cases, dual Warcry javelins, but you do lose some Warcry bumps with that if you're going for the faster cast aspect of spirits. So instead, I generally prefer dual Heart of the Oak since it gives us a total of plus 6 to all skills and an 80% faster cast which gets us to a decent breakpoint. And while you could squeeze out another frame by going dual suicide branches and a caster amulet, it's generally not worth the trade-off considering we want the bigger boosts and have better options for an amulet to help guarantee double damage consistently and don't want to waste it on a caster amulet. And before it said, no, you cannot use called arms on this build and have it be effective, since O skills just don't function well on class. And if you want to know more about it, check out in the cards in the top right again, I'm linking another one, and I'll link the gear skill guide where you can get more information as to why. Now, back to the amulet, I went with High Lord's Wrath. No, we don't need the attack speed with this, but we use it in the more deadly strike and lightning resist aspect. If you want to go absolutely min-max though, there are some rare and crafted options that can work quite well, but you will find that you crit a bit less often with them. And if you're having trouble hitting with certain setups, other strong options like Metal Grid are great for their massive boost to attack rating, though it is significantly less common to come across than High Lords. 
Helmet-wise, we're just running with Ariats with a Cham rune in it, of course, for Cannot Be Frozen. It's just an all-round great helmet, though if you want more Crushing Blow and are on a budget, G-Face is a solid option here, or if you're going for Magic Find, a Harlequin Crest will go a decent distance. Though, since I'm not aiming for uniques, rares, or set items while playing this, I tend to minimize my Magic Find percent, and this helmet works great for that. Now, since we lack a shield for this, I went ahead and decided to use String of Years for Life Leech and Damage Reduction, while Verdungo's is a nice alternative. For PVM, String tends to just be more enjoyable to use for me, so personal preference, it's what's there. On the rings, I went with the usual Dual Leech ring for, well, it just being a really good ring, and I'm very happy to have it, and I also grabbed a rare Mana Leech ring with Resist, just because Whirlwind is a bit mana hungry, so you want to get that leech up. If you don't have Cannot Be Frozen in the helmet, you can use Raven Frost here. Just know you will lose a small percent of your corpses to the ice damage causing chill and ultimately a, well, destruction of the corpse. On the gloves, currently using Laying of Hands for the plus damage demons, and you will use it for increased attack speed, like with the High Lords for the more budget weapon setups. But for here, we don't really need the attack speed boost since we already hit the limit. So if you were looking for different options, rare and crafted gloves can give some fun options here. Though if you're going to be killing act bosses, this helps out a ton. Finally, on the boots, we're using the tried and true gore riders. These are just great boots and you'll see me use them on pretty much every martial build. Just because you can't really beat the mods in most situations, with the exception of certain setups like the Avenger Paladin or Blade Assassin. Charm wise, you want damage charms, and of course, Torch and Annihilus. Now, there might be a question popping up, why am I using an Infinity Mercenary? And the answer is pretty much just for act bosses for the recording of B-Real, since ignore target defense on grief does not work on them. And I found with this setup, it was just faster to lawnmower them down than to wait for Reaper's Toll to proc. That said, for general play, yes, you will go with Reaper's Toll, especially if you are shifting more towards magic find setups and on this build that do a little bit less damage. So, what type of Barbarian do you usually play? Are you a Warcry fanatic, a spin to winner, a frenzy barb, or do you go with the trendy berserker barb, or maybe the finely viable throw barb like what's on screen now? Mention it down below, and as always, thanks for watching.